Good morning. My name is Rocky Agbenog. I'm the Information Systems Manager for St. John's County, Florida. Uh, with me presenting our implementation of CityWorks for Fleet. This is Krista Marvell, is our Senior GIS Analyst. So that was kind of like, you know, quick brief. Uh, St. John's County is uh, located in Northeast Florida, just directly south of Jacksonville, about two hours north of Orlando. So St. John's County is one of the fastest growing county in the, in the state and about we have an increase of 44% population since uh, the last census. Uh, the main users of CityWorks within the county is our public works department and utilities department. Public works consists of the, the engineering operation traffic um, also that handles all the sign signals, pavement management, and also of course our road and bridge uh, and uh, handles all the drainage and road infrastructure maintenance, so as fleet, solid ways, uh, construction services. So we've been a user of CityWorks since 2005, we have about 150 plus users and our utilities departments about close to 200 of you. So um, quick facts uh, about St. John's County. It's the home of uh, St. Augustine, the nation's oldest settled city. So we have a lot of historical landmarks. Um, so it's a very tourism de uh, development um, it's the economy. So we have 42 miles of coastal beach and also surrounded by St. John's County uh, River. Uh, so our implementation of fleet, of CityWorks for Fleet, and pretty much started in 2008. Uh, they've been using it for a while. So around 2018, 19, we came up with a new system to kind of see how CityWorks is operating, how can we enhance it, how can we um, better use of our, our GIS and come up with better reporting. So that was kind of like a big overhaul that we did to just kind of make sure that fleet is up to speed and using CityWorks as their main uh, work order system. So we want to have a, a reliable data, a reliable system that we can produce like scheduling as well as life cycle predictive uh, analysis. And the main thing that we want to be able to do is like the cradle to grave management of our fleet. So we did a lot of those enhancements and we want to leverage obviously CityWorks more and GIS overall of how fleet operates and use CityWorks. So some of our key solution that we um, that we were working on uh, was basically, ultimately we just had to learn how a fleet operates from as simple as them receiving the vehicles, creating the work orders, how to do their, uh, what, what is it called when they do their PM maintenance, what level of maintenance are they doing? So we literally have to kind of dive in and you know, get into how a fleet operates. And we want to definitely leverage what we have in RGS enterprise system as well as uh, CityWorks uh, to basically use it for their fleet maintenance. And throughout this implementation, we want to make sure that stakeholders are aware of, of what we're solving and what we're enhancing to kind of make more like a natural big impact that they can actually see. And ultimately, it's, you know, reporting data we have in the past, it wasn't, it just wasn't enough. You know, we just need to have more reliable data. We just need to have the cleaner data so we can have our fleet shop or our operations uh, to be able to dive and drill down to the data. So kind of come up with their own um, data, their own reporting, their own way of actually analyzing their data a little bit better. So some of our implementation efforts, we basically you know, took it apart in four different uh, sections. Uh, the, main, the biggest effort that we did was to, to scrub the data to make it a little bit more standardized, make it more accurate, as simple as you know, spelling the word Ford, F-150, or whatnot, and to come up with an industry standard of actually keeping up with those data. And ultimately, our goal is to have that way of doing insights and analytics to this data to make it a little bit more user-friendly, make it a little bit more you know, refined. And we also analyze and assess their, uh, how are they actually using the process of using CityWorks. Um, are this you know, work order templates even relevant to what they're doing now has to change. And one of the main thing that they wanted for us to do is to be able to um, just to have a standard of work orders and be able to have uh, different ways to, um, to, to kind of elaborate on what kind of PM are they doing and ultimately is to kind of to notify our stakeholders and come up with uh, APIs a little bit better. And so this are kind of this bullet points is just kind of our main um, milestones that we kind of presented to our stakeholders. So, you know, we definitely did a lot of overhauling to the user interface, uh, leveraged the inbox a lot, XML changes, and also looked at response. And one of the stuff that we're looking at right now is the allocation manager plugin for response. And and one of the biggest um, implementation that we have is the NAPA integration within a work order system. We want to make sure that's intact. 
and eventually later on, um, CityWorks and Napa, uh, there's an API that we'd like to leverage to, to make this system a little bit better. And ultimately, it's come up with those you know, reports that they can see to kind of analyze and be able to come up with scheduling their PMs and when certain things need to be scheduled and come up with some trigger points and leverage the operational insights, leverage ArcGIS insights and, and any other report. So all this will basically kind of gel all together. So we had to kind of get all this informa information to kind of come up with this enhanced CityWorks for fleet. So next couple of slides, I'll have Crystal kind of go through some of the implementation that we did. Thanks, Rocky. Um, yeah, we took some time to identify and resolve the pain points that our fleet staff was experiencing. Uh, we did this through meetings and interactions. We learned a lot about the industry standard activities um, that are within the, the fleet industry in order to make more relevant and specific work order categories and descriptions. And we'll see a little bit about that. And that's really one of the critical pieces is being specific about the work order categories and the descriptions. Um, in addition, we really, you know, as Rocky was saying, we wanted a reliable maintenance scheduling. And in order to do that, we really needed to optimize um, fleet's workflows um, within CityWorks and how they use CityWorks. And in addition to prioritize prioritize um, data automate, automation with the use of box solutions and um, other integrations. And so here we're going to kind of get a little um, dive into our inbox. We're looking at the inbox that's you know representing some standard operating procedures available, some reporting. Um, we've summarized a lot of the information about uh, heavy shop versus light shops um, on an easy um, clickable screen within CityWorks using searches, GIS searches, and other items. Um, and here, because of those specific work order types, we can really get a snapshot about what types of work fleet are doing um, in the last 30 days, um, very specific to the task itself. Um, and now we're going to kind of go through um, how we're creating work orders. We're searching um, with the four-digit um, uh, CD number, and the information, of course, has been expanded um, relating to each vehicle. We're gathering more specific information, and we're gathering more precise information. And here's a great look at just, uh, you know, work orders, um, the kind of um, what happened to this vehicle in one click, you know, a couple clicks, you can see all the work orders that have happened um, in time with this vehicle. And here we are um, creating um, a work order. In this case, we're gonna create a PM work order. Um, and I talked about the specifics, we're getting specific based on like even PMs, we're PM light, um, 50K all the way up through. Um, this is our XML changes kind of um, show, representing um, some information here. Um, we were able to bring in costs um, to fleet versus costs that fleet bills out right into the work order itself. Uh, in addition, we're, every PM is, we're assessing the condition of the vehicle. And that in time is gonna really feed into a vehicle replacement program and a scoring program. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that um, as the slides go by. Another goal of ours was to create reliable maintenance scheduling, as we've mentioned a few times, and to manage, and so, and also to manage the daily cradle to grave data point gathering, um, which provided us with long term perspective of our lifetime assessments of the vehicles and replacement predictions. We leveraged, as the bullet points are kind of showing, we leveraged GeoEvent Geo Server to gather up-to-date odometer readings and dates from our fueling system. In addition, we utilize asset updates in CityWorks at the close of a work order. Um, we're pushing the last, the uh, work order description into the GIS data, as well as the date of that, um, of that particular um, service that happened. And then at the end of the day, we're taking these up-to-date data and we're, um, utilizing SQL procedures to um, calculate the upcoming PM when that's gonna happen. Um, and so because we have this great reliable data in both the work order in, within CityWorks and in our GIS data layer, we can really leverage um, operational insights with confidence. And so at a high level, we're seeing summary statistics. Um, these are key performance indicators that we felt were important. And then as a manager or a, um, you know, a stakeholder can really dive into the details and get more information. 
we're even um, able to display information about specific um, mechanics slash technicians. What are, you know, what do they tend to spend more time on? And then at a at a higher level, look at a whole shop, um, the heavy shop, the light shop. What kinds of work are they doing most often? Where are they spending the majority of their time? And because of this connection to outside sources, this we're able to kind of uh, tap into our feeling data and um, really show that as well. Um, and here we are back in CityWorks, as you might uh, expect, we're able to um, connect to a dashboard that we've created that um, really uh, dials into what PMs have been done in the recent past and what PMs are upcoming, you know, and this is getting back at that ability to schedule. Um, the same information is viewable within CityWorks as a GIS data layer. Um, because we're saving everything back to that feature class, uh, we can really like uh, sift for the department how many vehicles are upcoming for PMs and et cetera and contact them as needed. Um, that's okay. <laughs> So we're getting a, a, another look. Um, right. And then in addition, you know, it really starts, how does, how do you, we spend a considerable amount of time scrubbing data and we really want to keep it up to date. And so for us, starting at the level of when the county takes over a vehicle, we're really going to begin um, that process of bringing data in in an uh, efficient and consistent way. And so we're, we've are we integrated a VIN lookup um, and we're going to kind of go through, of course, it started with paper. And then we took that information and we put it into an inspection within CityWorks. Things like included our like purchase date, purchase cost, um, the, de the department or the division that is um, needing the vehicle, um, the, the fleet's assessment of the type of vehicle it is. Um, and then after, at the end of the day, the, we're also the VIN. The VIN is a really important piece of this and uh, uh, you know making sure that VIN is accurate. Um, and then at the end of the day, this work order closes. And of course, it's gonna be written to the CityWorks database. Um, we're using um, you know asset updates on the close. And so therefore our geo database and within um, our, in our fleet vehicles is gonna be updated as well. Um, and then um, this is where we're using a Python script to connect to an open API that exists on the, on the web to grab and decode the VIN information and bring it back into the fleet table. And really when you saw that picture of the asset, um, you can really see how much detailed information we're collecting, we're collecting make, model, trans, you know, stuff like four-wheel drive versus, you know, other stuff that uh, I think is valuable to, hopefully is valuable um, to our fleet, uh, fleet group. Yeah, so some of the key points that we did with Dirt Enhancer is literally just cleaning up the data and scrubbing it, and then there's always a dynamic function and action manager and some of the scripts that we wrote that we basically updates that data. So now that scrub, well, obviously you want to make sure it's well maintained. So really the main thing here is standardize the vehicle information. It becomes a little bit more a reliable data, the data that you can trust. You can start driving a lot of analysis and a lot of this um, uh, KPIs. The geo event service definitely helps out streamline that data so we can actually pull examples like the odometer readings from the fuel information we can actually grab that and push that to the, to the GIS. And of course that enables us to do any kind of analysis, and analytics, predictive scheduling, maintenance, uh, and also come up with this dashboard that, uh, that our fleet operation uses. So what's next for us, uh, our implementation? So we created this survey one, two, three form that's actually ready to be deployed. So this is just kind of one of those daily safety pre-check prep trip. <laughs> pre-trip checklist that you know the staff can actually use using their mobile device to kind of check around the vehicle. So this is one of those opportunities we can also grab a dominant reading again so update the GIS. So this kind of sample here, we can push that into the, to the main system. There's also an API integration that we have that uh, goes from the survey one to three to the service request API should the, um, the, the operator needs to send a request to schedule uh, a maintenance for that vehicle. Another one that we're working on is the, the, the bin barcoding concept using the CityWorks mobile uh, native app version 10. 
so we can actually scan the barcode or asset information the then qr code you can also type in uh the actual what we we'll call it the cv number the county vehicle number to search for that asset so from the mobile device it selects the um it selects the asset you can see the detail of the asset and then it gives our um, service riders the ability to create work orders and inspections so then the next biggest thing that we've actually ready to deploy that we've been working on a lot is our way to score a vehicle, um, meaning that kind of standardized cumulative scoring based on age, mileage, uh, maintenance cost to that. And that sort of threshold, we like to be able to present this during budget season to say, hey, the, your vehicle is due for replacement. So some of the stuff that we actually leverage again into the inbox of CityWorks is to use the GIS searches to come up with what you know, what are vehicles that are over seven years old? You know, what vehicles are over 150,000 miles uh, threshold? So we can basically list that, and our fleet shop can actually do analysis and do reporting on this, and then to kind of come up with uh, better ways of assessing their um, their assets, their fleet. As simple as giving the record as far as which one is the critical vehicles that needs to be replaced, and how many of those belong to each department. And again, at the same time, they can use this list to kind of provide for uh, budgeting uh, concepts. So the way we did this is we just basically added an additional fields in a GIS to kind of give us the age score from the make and model or the year model and then today's date and then mileage score, obviously, for any kind of odometer reading. So you have this cumulative score of 100. Anything that's below 59 will be the critical vehicles that needs to be replaced. So we're also using any of our existing reports right now that gives us this life cycle report, the status of the vehicle as far as how much view, uh, how much maintenance we put into this vehicle so they can use this report as well to do their uh, planning for an upcoming, uh, upcoming budget cycle. So we've done a lot of enhancements into the GIS, uh, to the city work. So kind of, we felt like a lot of this was gonna, you know, definitely worthwhile doing enhancement. Now I gotta stop this, hold on. <laughs> Okay, so thank, thank you for having us uh, present our enhancements. Uh, I'd like this opportunity to thank my public works team, Krista, Stephanie, Tripp, Tim, who put a lot of effort into putting all this stuff together, all the data, and of course, uh, our city works team and Larry, Celine, and Brad Johnson helped us direct us the right path of you know how to approach the, the integration a little bit better. And of course, our business partners with Jones Evans and Associates and uh, GI Sync Axon for helping us on this integration.